welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be installing an old one, but a good one, Windows XP in VirtualBox on a Windows 10 PC. We're gonna take a look at the minimum requirements, but if you're watching this video on YouTube, you most likely are blowing out the requirements right now. You're gonna need at least 64 megs of RAM, not gigs, megs of RAM, so I'm sure you'll be fine with that. 128 is gonna be recommended. A 1.5 gigs of hard disk space. You're gonna need a single core available. I tried two, I actually ran into problems. I have to downgrade, so one core. You're gonna need the Windows XP SP3 ISO image file, that's just the latest service pack that came out before it was done. And you're also gonna need VirtualBox with the extension pack installed. If you don't know how to get that installed, you can check out this video and I'll walk you through the steps. This one's for nostalgia. There's a lot of people doing throwback videos. I said, why not do an XP one? So I'm gonna do that. I might even try Windows 3.1. If you're interested in seeing that, let me know in the comments below. Other than that, let's get to the installation. And here we are at the Windows 10 desktop. And what we're gonna be doing today is installing Windows XP inside VirtualBox. So I have my VirtualBox already here and I have a downloaded copy of the Windows XP ISO image file. And that's what I'm gonna need. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be clicking on the new button. All right, so we're doing Windows XP. So I'm gonna type in Windows XP. I'm gonna keep the machine folder as is, Microsoft Windows as a type and XP. Now you can select the 32-bit or 64-bit. I don't know what version I have. I think the safest route is gonna be 32-bit. So that's what I'm gonna select, click on next. And it doesn't need much memory, but play it safe. I'm gonna give it two gigs. Click on next and uh, virtual hard disk. Yep, that's fine. Click on next and we'll be using VDI. So we'll click on next with that and dynamically allocated is gonna be fine as well. Two gigs, sorry, 10 gigs of space. That's quite a bit for Windows XP. Uh, let's just do five. All right, click on create. And now we have it. I'm gonna go in the settings here and I wanna to point to my ISO image file. So I'm gonna go down to storage, select this empty disk, check the live CD and then go over here and then select my Windows XP Pro ISO file and then click on open. So now we have it selected and I'm not gonna be changing anything else here. Display settings, I mean, we can max this out. I don't think there's any negative effect for doing that because I don't know what it's gonna do here. So I'm gonna click on okay and uh, let's start it up and see what happens. Close out of these windows. Okay, so it's gonna start going through a setup phase right now. This will take some time to copy over all the files. I'll just skip over to the next part. Okay, so we don't have a partition created yet for installing it, so I'm gonna create the partition right now. See on my keyboard, I'm gonna use the maximum amount of space, which is the five gigs I allocated to this. Hit enter, and now we have a new partition space, so we can go ahead and install it. We can do that by hitting enter on our keyboard, and now we want to format it. I like using NTFS, but I've had problems with that, so I'm just gonna use the FAT filing system, the quick format should be fine. I'll hit enter on my keyboard and then enter again to continue. And now it's gonna format it and then it should start copying over the files. So the formatting is complete and start copying over the files. And here we go, it's copying everything over. This does take a bit to, this will take some time. So what I'll do is I'll just jump over to the next part. Okay, so it's done copying. It's just trying to do a reboot right now. So I'm gonna let it reboot. Okay, so it looks like it's so far so good. Uh, I got further than I did last time. I think I have to run it as a FAT32 system, file system versus NTFS. There might be an issue. Maybe someone who's watching this video can confirm that. As it's copying right now, it says approximately 39 minutes. I know that's a lie. So I'll let that go through and we'll jump over to the next step. Okay, so we have the setup wizard here. We have to personalize our installation. So we just need to type in a name here and I'll on next. And now we need the name of the computer and I'll also give it a password. Great, and I'll click on next. So we have the date. The only thing I'm gonna change in here is the time zone. So now it's gonna go ahead and finish installing some network components. We'll see what happens next. Okay, so we're on to the next step and it's asking to improve the visual settings. It wants to adjust the resolution. So I'm just gonna click on okay and it should try to adapt it. That looks fine. It's gonna use probably a standard 720p setup or maybe 768. I'm gonna let it go through this initial part of copying over and booting up. I'm just gonna move this over here and uh, we'll just check it out and see what happens. Right now, a lot of nostalgia. I haven't seen this XP startup screen in a long time. <laughs> here we go. So here is the starting screen for Windows XP. It's been a long time since I've seen this. So it's asking us to click on next and we'll go ahead and do that. Now it wants to uh, do some automatic updates. I don't even think that's gonna be available. So uh, it's been, we're in the year 2021 and I think they stopped supporting this over 20 years ago. I'm gonna say not right now and then click on next. 
it's checking for internet connectivity. I haven't bridged anything yet. It should be done automatically, but um, let's just see if it detects my internet connection. No, I'm not gonna register. And it needs to know a user. Do I have to put in a user? Yes, I have to put in a user. Okay, user one. Okay, click on next. Thank you, click on finish. <laughs> okay, no audio, but here we are. This is the Windows XP desktop. It's been a long time since I've been here. Computer might be at risk. Yeah, I'm sure it might be at risk. Okay, so let's just uh, see if I can install the guest edition CD devices and I'm gonna insert the CD image and maybe I'll just go into the file explorer. There it is. Okay, so we're gonna right click on it and we'll auto play. Let's see if it installs it. Yep, okay, so click on next, next and install. Okay, looks like it's done. It wants to reboot. This will be interesting to see uh, what we get out of it. So I'm gonna click on finish. All right, that was actually pretty quick. Now let's try to go into uh, full screen and see what happens. Switch. And we have a full screen Windows XP set up here. That is awesome. Internet Explorer. No, it's not working. Okay. Uh, how about I just try to ping? Let's try pinging Yahoo. Okay. So it has connectivity. It might be a browser thing. Internet options. Land settings. Automatic. Okay. Google. There we go. Okay, we're connected. So I just have to switch it so it's using LAN settings. But here we go, we're up and running. We're using Windows XP on a Windows 10 PC using VirtualBox. Everything seems to be running properly. We have all the standard Windows XP software installed in here, like some of the games. <laughs> <laughs> got free cell hearts pinball pinball was awesome yeah a little bit of nostalgia but if you're interested in installing it on a windows 10 pc using virtualbox it works fine everything is up and running you're able to use your browser you can probably upgrade the browser as well uh, and that's it that's how you do it if you have any questions go ahead and put them in the comments below if you're interested in installations like this or other operating systems let me know in the comments below you can also follow me as i have a lot more content coming out uh, thank you for supporting the channel drop a like if you don't mind giving me that digital currency thank you for watching and i'll catch you on the next one